hello, what's poppin'? We are on kick. You can come join us if you want. If not, that's cool. Just leave a like, comment, subscribe. Turn on the post notification bells, man. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. If we happen to go live and you missed that live, right here is where the highlights from that live will be. Uh, we'll probably be live for another, once you get this video, we'll probably be live for another like hour maybe, if that. I'm um, trying to make it to five hours today, I'm trying to get 75 followers, so go to the link in the description under the link tree, hit kick, sub up man, follow up, follow up. Don't forget we do got the Patreon and we also have the Discord as well man. This is Taboo Room, the Taboo Room. Damn, I remember they had less subs than me. Salute. <laughs> you try, hey, that's what happens when you be dropping bangers. Um, Lon London Gangster. Eight attempted murders. Fresh hung. Kula. Eight. Eight. Yeah. My name is Cola. Cola. Some people call me Cola Royale. I'm from West London, Shepherd's Bush. I was arrested for... My bad. For eight attempted murders. I was charged with two attempted murders. I was also charged with possession of a firearm with intent to endanger life. Sentenced to 11 years. I've been out three weeks. And this is my story. God damn it. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm originally from Shepherd's Bush, West London. And that's in England, if you didn't know. And uh, my childhood growing up was um, full of excitement full of fun, there was good bits, there was bad bits, but... What was your education like? My education was good. You know, I went, I went Mouse Coverdale Primary School. That's also in Shepherd's Bush. And I attended Phoenix High School as a secondary school. Um, yeah, and what, was your, what did you leave with? What grades did you leave school with? And what was school like? Well, I got kicked out from my secondary school, but when I went into people referral unit, I um I got a C, I got a C, I got a B, I got a C in maths. Um, and um, what was the referral unit like? Oh, bro, I was trying to remember his whole report card. You was a mid student. Just say I was a mid student. I was mid. I was mid in, in school. Oh, uh, just full of loads of kids who, you know, being kicked out of secondary school. And I say it's all like troubled kids, <laughs> troubled kids. So, you know, some some people quite smart there as well. But everyone has something in common. That was very, very aggressive at times. You're right. I got kicked out of secondary school, is what y'all call it. We call it high school. I got kicked out of high school. Went to a little some place. It's called I'm, I'm Budsman. It's called Budsman. I, I it's a alternative school for all the bad kids <laughs> i used to come up in there and i had my chevy i had a box chevy 89 on 24s 412 subwoofers banging had not a care in the world <laughs> did not got kicked out eh. still got a diploma didn't i got up out of there early oh, too I've, I've got you here today to talk about the case i guess that changed your life forever Okay. Um, yeah, can you tell me from the start about the case and what happened? Oh, the case that changed my life, I'll say, is um, when I got to 11 years in prison, you know. Um, basically, well, you want to know when I, got, when I actually got arrested or... It's from the start, so what was the, what was the charge? What were you accused of? Yeah, I was accused of two attempted murders and a possession of a firearm with intent to endanger life. Tell me about the day you got arrested. So the day I actually got arrested was um, on my way to on my way to college. That's when I got arrested. Um, so I was initially stopped for a search. Then the officer decided to take it further and take me to the police station for, to conduct a strip search. Okay. And as long as I was there, cheaters hate this website. A Spokio name search. I feel attacked by this this ad. I was assaulted by the police officer. Um, I was assaulted by the police officer because he claimed that I tried to conceal something. 
nothing was found, but I was I was punched, kicked in my stomach and stuff like that. And uh, after that, I was later arrested for obstructing a police officer in, in, in line oh, of duty or something man. like that. That well, should be the weakest charge is when the police... So, I be noticing, man, when I got arrested one time in Rosemont, it's a suburb in the, of the city called Rosemont. Um, it's a bunch of bars and clubs over there. So, I didn't I didn't resist arrest or anything. Got up against the wall, put my hands behind my back. They took me to where they took me. But they tased me. They tased me because I was being loud. That's not a that's not a suitable reason to tase somebody. So in the police report, they have to cover their tracks. They said I was that, that I was a uh, uh, they they charged me with uh, resisting because they did that. So you, they, when they do stupid shit like that that they shouldn't be doing, they be having to charge you. They you 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 reap the percussions of what they do. They charge you to cover their footsteps. While I was waiting to get out of the police station, that's when uh, another officer from another department came into the cell door, the police cell door, and he said to me, um, I'm further arresting you on suspicion of um, possession of firearm with intent to endanger life. But they ain't fine. So you was charged for something completely, nothing to do with this whatsoever? No. Yes, and I was, I was on bail. I was also on bail. So I was, I was on bail for what? I was on bail for, I think... You know what you was on bail It was a shooting. Mm. I was on bail for a shooting at that time. And so so you already had aggravated charges, so when you was on your way to school and they stopped you, they knew who you was. They knew your reputation. So, you know what I'm saying? Then it led up to all of this. You got to add that in. Like, that makes sense now. I was on bail for... I was on bail for something else, but I can't, I can't remember what it was. But I just come out of jail that time as well. It was like three months I'd been out, so I'm on tag. Oh, man. So when I was in the police station, I was lucky to get bail, but then I was arrested for possession of a firearm, 10 to days of life. And it was the particulars of the case that actually got me remanded into prison. Do you know what I mean? So I guess what goes through one's head when you, when you hear that, so not, not everyone's going to hear that in their life, so well, I guess when he said that to you, what, what, what was the first thing that came to your head? I was more worried about getting bail because at, at the time, I don't know if, if you call it arrogance, but I, I, I just wasn't, I wasn't, it wasn't sinking in too much. I was just more thinking, I need to get out of here because I had a music video that was going to come out. I could. Uh, after I reacted to this, this is 50 minutes, so... So what was next? So you've now been charged. Mad had me, so I got arrested first. <laughs> and they just, they just said, oh, um, basically, there was a car that was in the area of a shooting. And my, a mobile phone that's been attributed to me was also located in that area. And there was messages on my phone being sent to somebody whose cell site From Zeno. is um, in the area where the shooting took place. Okay. But it didn't really, there wasn't nothing to say that. So are they, are they trying to insinuate at this point that are the, it just, some, it, someone was shot and they're trying to say that you've texted the person at the location of the shooting? He, what, no, what they were saying at that time was that it's just a suspicion. Um, Obviously. Yeah, because they're reaching right there. They're just trying to tie you to the. To, they're trying to. They was trying to tie you to it. They were speculating. Been neighbors reporting stuff, and there's witness state statements been taken, and what they said was a shooting definitely took place because the crime scene investigation was called to the scene, and they found all the bullet casing. There was a. There was somebody who actually saw the shooting take place, and they just said looking at all the evidence at that time, the person they think carried out that shooting was me. And because of the mob my mobile phone was in that area and the car they believe was used for the shooting had also been in that area. But they didn't tell me everything at the time. They just told me just a summary of what's going on. 
and it was up to me to now put my case forward to obviously tell them what had gone on. You know what I'm saying? I don't know, man. That's a little patchy. A little patchy. But as I said in the interview, I just said I made it prepared. I still don't understand how they even tied him to the... I, I understand how they tied him to the case, but something's being left out. Statement. I said I wasn't the one who fired the gun. I wasn't in the area of the shooting. And okay. that was it. No comment interview. So I was just thinking, oh, that's going to be all right. I'm going to go home. I'll deal with this after. But then I was called to the desk, desk, the front desk, and the officers said, to you, you're being charged. And that's yeah. when my heart really sunk. <laughs> because I was, I, I, I was just thinking, I've only just come out. So what was next? So you've been charged at this stage, and then what was, what was the next step after that? Uh, just I got to prison, and obviously I was being visited by my barrister, and he told me, I, I changed my barrister three times. That's a lawyer, if anybody's in America watching, that's not a, like, a coffee maker, that's not a Starbucks employee. Because I was looking to take the case, I was gonna take the case to trial, but the barrister, he's came to see me. It was a KC, because he used to have King, Queen's Council at that time, QC, and now it's the King's Council because the King's now enthroned, so they call it the KC. So I had a QC at that time. You didn't even sound right. A Queen's Council um, came to see me. So Queen's Council is basically, a, um, a, a, if you don't have a, a, a lawyer, one will be appointed to you the type of situation. I forgot what they called him. I ain't been, I ain't had a case in so long. And thank God he said to me, the best option at this point was to plead guilty. At Universal Technical Institute, you don't have to. Well, that sounds just like one of them. I never ever take a, a court-appointed lawyer, man. Because they be on the, they, you don't know whose side they really on. Everybody in there is friends. If you really pay attention when you go to court, everybody is friends. They all homies in there. I'm talking the judge, the lawyers, their law, the state lawyer versus your, your lawyer. They all cool. So if they can get you to plead out, even though you're innocent, that's what they will do. Because they don't, they don't take an L. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't cost money to for the, the going to court costs money. It costs the state money, or whoever, whatever y'all call it over there, it costs money. So I'd never take a uh, a court appointed lawyer, man. I'm going to go hire something. I don't care. You know what I'm saying? Yes. And I looked at him. Now, Wait, how many years? For ten years, at this point, was to plead guilty for 10 years and I looked at him like what are you talking about told the lawyer to holler at you when you sober but what 10 years out your mind you know what I'm saying at this point like what are you talking about I, I'm not going guilty for no 10 years because 10 years at that time was getting a it's, it's just like your whole life how old are you at this stage I was 20 years old 20, 20 years old or 21 I was 20 I was 20 yeah 20, I feel it's 20, 21, 21. I just turned 21. So I'm just thinking to myself, he's got to get sacked. So I sacked him. Yeah, definitely. So I got another barrister. And he was just not visiting me on time. So I sacked him as well. And then I got a new barrister who also represented me again in another case. For him. I didn't have a QC this time, I had a junior barrister. And I feel, I feel partly that's, that played a role in, um, in the prosecution, sort of like winning the case, because there was loads of evidence induced at that trial that I, I couldn't challenge. Plus I was young, you know? So yeah, at that time, they, when I was in prison, more of the case paper was sent to me. And that's when more of the evidence was unraveling. And that's um, the particulars of, you know, a video on the internet. It's funny how after they charge you and you get to jail that you can see everything. 
you can see how your whole case played out. And then you could probably pay to get like a um to get it redone or whatever it's called. Like appeal. You can pay for an appeal. Of a car. That video on the internet of a car that they say I own. Um was being smashed up on the net, you know? Do you own it or not? Saying that, you know, I've got problems with people and stuff like that. And they're saying that this issue is it derives from gang stuff and <laughs> they call me, but I've I've just always made it clear that that's not the case. But they was using this this was evidence because that's what they do. The police will they'll bring whatever it takes to try and get you convicted. And I was up to you to put your case forward for your defense. You know what I'm saying? So you're in a sticky point at this situation. Like at that point, you have to, you have to figure out your way out. Cause you can tell the truth all you want. But like I always say, my barrister told me once, he said, court cases all the time is not about the truth. It's not. It's about who can lie the best. Yeah, that's a fact. That's a fact. We can get up there and tell that best lie to convince everybody. That's what I'm saying. So, I'm gonna see. I feel like that's bogus, though. Like it, it ties back into what I was saying earlier about, um, you know, everybody being cool with everybody. You know what I'm saying? In the courtroom, they be playing with your life and your freedom and things like that for, for their record, for their own personal gain and stuff. Like, yo, situation where phone that is attributed to me situation where a phone that is attributed to me is leaving an area where they're saying I stay a car that witnesses say they saw the um shooting take place like take place from um is in the area and unfortunately well, not unfortunately but the car had a tracker on it and the car is able to tell you how fast you're going to the exact location when the ignition is on when the ignition is off so all this data is um showing it's just linking it to me all of this data all of this cctv did they ever see your face did they get dna off the firearm that tied you directly to the firearm let's see one yes or no Thinking it to me, so I, I guess at any stage, drawing this trial because obviously you've been offered the chance to go guilty, yeah. and I guess when, if if I'm transparent, I guess the evidence is not looking good. So I guess at any stage, was you thinking maybe I should have gone guilty, even though you believed that you wasn't? No, because their 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 case was I tried to kill two people. That's their case, and. I say that those two people are my friends and how it looks and how you, what, how they was trying to paint this picture is wasn't as so at that time, you know? And how long was the trial? The trial was, um, I found out two weeks. And how long did the trial to come to a verdict? Uh, I think they took, they took a, just h- half a day. Damn. Well, they had you pent to, the, to it already. They made their decision quickly. Two-week trial, half, 12 hours to come to a verdict. Half a day. I think it was half a day or a day and a half. I can't remember. I just remember the, the, the verdicts when it came. What was your gut feeling prior to that verdict being read out? Did you come to that confident? Uh, to be honest, I was, I was, I, I was a con- con- very confident and, and slightly cocky because I'd been on many cases and it was just a winning streak. And I'm, I'm a born winner. You know what I'm saying? That's why I said I'm a born winner. <laughs> so, hey, that's not how that shit works. Not, not the court. Shoot. You talking about you was born winner. You lost the other one. You on probation. As far as I'm concerned, you 0-1. You didn't lost every court case. It probably could have been hard, worse, but you know what I'm saying? But come on. I was confident. I was being, you know, the gang units was coming to see me and I don't, 
I, well, I do know why, but they were just, I, I don't think they wanted me out. And I remember my probation officer said to me, a woman called Mariam, she said to me, she said, you need a, lo you need a long prison sentence because I feel like you need time to reflect. This game. Everybody was against bro. PO officer ain't, you know what I'm saying? When your PO officer tell you that, she's more likely to call you back and not give you no type of leniency, nothing. And I was, I, I, I was, I was like, any little thing. I didn't have to take that. I just felt like, are you, are you wishing, are you wishing bad for me? And you know, the, there's these little gang units that come and see you and they were asking me, what are you gonna do when you come out? Do you understand? Because they, they knew this was my last case. I was on trial for other things, other things. I literally just finished a trial a week prior to that trial. That I won that, I won, I had, there was seven indictments on that case. Okay, one on one. And I had a co-defendant on that case as well. And we beat, we beat every single indictment. And there was one charge of, I think it was GBH on that case that was left because the jury could have come to a conclusion. So that was still hanging over me while I was on this trial. Do you feel me? So when the verdict did come. What was the I, verdict? I, I was on that trial for the two attempted murders. So they said not guilty, not guilty. And then the foreman of the jury said they found on the, on the firearms like guilty. And my, my heart sunk a little bit. But at the same time, I just had to keep strong and just think, what, what now? Just I'm saying, what now? But I knew what the sentence carried, you know what I'm saying? It was gonna be a, a big sentence because the, the prosecution, they wanted me really, really bad. Do you follow me at that time? But in some case, I felt like the, the trial was a bit unfair in some ways because every trial has a route to verdict. So when the case has been summed up, the judge will always give the, the jury who's the ones presiding on the case, they're gonna, they, they get given a route to verdict. So they will ask questions for them to come to their yeah, conclusion yeah, yeah, yeah. if guilty or not guilty. So they'll say something like, if you believe this man was the one who fired the gun on that day, then he's guilty beyond reasonable doubt. If you believe beyond reasonable doubt, but if you are in doubt or unsure, then the verdict you should come back with is not guilty. Right. You know, the whole case, was that I was the man who fired the gun. I was, my defense was, I wasn't the guy who fired the gun. I was the passenger of the vehicle. But the prosecution knew what my defense was. So what they did was. This is the first time we're hearing that he was the passenger, right? Man, I'm gonna tell you something, man. Listen, I didn't know that he was even in the car at all, okay? He said when he got picked up by the police and they was interrogating him, he said he had a no comment interrogation, which is not fully true because they asked him two questions and he answered the two questions. The que or the one question, the one that matters. Or he said to them, I was not the one in the car who fired the gun. What is that to me personally? If there's only two people in this car, passenger, driver. I don't know if there was more people, but I'm going to go off what we heard so far. That there were two people, him and the, and the other person. If he says, I'm not the person that fired the gun. That's not a no comment. That's not a no comment. Um, that's not a no comment. That's not a no comment interrogation. In fact, that's almost snitching. That is, 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 if it's you and me and we both in the car and you say, I'm not the one that pulled the trigger, then who is? Who can you leave <laughs> to say that, that, that now we know who exact? No com you just if no comment is who was in the car, no comment. 
Who pulled the trigger? No comment. That's snitching. At least in America, that's snitching. If you just say no comment the full way through, then hey, we both gonna ride this this sentence out. If that's the way we wanna go. He still got charged though, even you know what I'm saying? So I don't know. Get the witness, the main witness, at this to point the state statement halfway through the trial. Get Cushion. I was the passenger of the vehicle. But the prosecution knew what my defense was, so what they did was get the witness, the main witness, to change the state statement halfway through the trial to say that he was mistaken and there was only one person in that vehicle that day because now it leaves just me in that car uh... and I'm the man on trial for firing the gun. So if there's only one driver and there's a shooter from that car, who do you think the shooter is? Okay. 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 So if his lawyer was playing it like they said it was two people and he knows that it wasn't two people and it was just him. I try to give the benefit of the doubt now because it... He almost will get the benefit of the doubt, but I don't know, man. It's, this is complicated. El arroz majatma de siempre, también disponible en bolsitas. I feel like the wording of this one is complicated. I... Because <laughs> if I'm his lawyer, and then we're going in the case, and the witness says that they seen two people... But you know, attorney client privilege, I'm telling you, yo, it was only me in the car. It was only me in the car, but they have a witness saying they seen somebody else. So I'm gonna say, even though I know that there was only me in the car, since they said there was two people in the car, I'm gonna say, hey, it wasn't me that was shooting out the window. Because if that's how he played it, all right, cool, that's not snitching there. That's just, that's just playing with the cards of dealt. <laughs> That's just playing with the cars were dealt. But now they got the, the witness to switch it up and say that you know, they only seen one person, which may be the wholehearted truth. Now it's like, ah, shoot. <laughs> you get me? Oh, Ivar, do you think the shooter is? The driver. The driver. There's was only one person in the car. Remember, there was two people in the car from the first statement right okay i said i was the passenger of that vehicle you know what i'm saying they've realized what the defense is and they've made the witness change the statement to say there was only one person in that car so if there's only one person in the car and there's one shooter it's the driver it's the driver and that's partly why i feel i got convicted as well but also the judge yeah. the root of verdict said that if you believe I knew the firearm was in the car. So that's not what I was on trial for. It, I wasn't on trial mm. for knowing the firearm was in the car. I was on trial for Ooh. shooting the gun out of the car. Do you understand? What was the firearm? Uh, it was a Mac-10 submachine gun. Damn! <laughs> Y'all was letting that Mac fly? I mean, My so bad. At that time, they, brought, they actually brought a Mac-10 to court. And during the trial, the prosecution made me hold a gun in court. I didn't hold a gun. I just, I just held a gun with my two hands like that. And I asked to put it down. But what they did was take the gun with the shoulder cock. I don't know if you've seen a sub a machine yeah, yeah, uh, a yeah, yeah, yeah. machine gun before. Oh, well, the shoulder cock on yes. the back. You know, some of them have the silencer. But they brought this gun to people in the jury that's never held a gun and passed it to each individual individual to hold it. Some of the jury didn't want to just hold this gun. Like, what? I'm going to let y'all know right off bat, a MAC-10, that's not a silencer on there. I mean, it is, but a MAC-10, if you shoot it, it's loud regardless. It's a muzzle to stop the recoil. <laughs> it kind of calms it down a little bit. <laughs> Allegedly, is what I've heard. Yeah, no, nah, they doing their best to put him in there. They doing their best. 
That whole route thing is crazy how they switched it up. Did you do you believe that it was in the car? That ain't what I'm on trial for. I would have his lawyer was supposed to say, whoa, whoa, whoa. You gotta reword that. Do you believe he was the shooter or not? <laughs> What's going on? And this this man here saying, fire this gun. So they all oh got it's it's like it's like a it's like a show. They made a video of a melon, a watermelon, next to a glass, and they got the firearms expert to fire the gun. Court. To, no, in the video, played to the jury. Right, right. To fire the gun to show you what the gun was capable of. And the gun misfired, I think, like, three times. But on the other test, the gun fired, and each time it, they used it to shoot a watermelon. So they was trying to show the jury, this is what the intention of Mr. D saw, this what his intention was on that day. That's why they, how they was trying to secure the the um, attempt to murder case. A sub machine, a Mac 10. You it, once you're shooting, there what they what it sounds like. <laughs> They tried to jam him for eight attempted murders. That means it was eight people in the general area that he shot at. You telling me he shot that and missed all of those shots out of a Mac? I'm, I'm almost positive y'all don't know how bullets come out of a Mac when you're hitting them back to back. So it's like, neither do I. This is all allegedly. I don't condone that type of behavior. But allegedly... It's, it's, it's hard to miss a group of 10 people or 8 people. You know. It's kind of tough. Now, but also at the same time, having this knowledge in my head, him driving arm out the window, Mac 10s do misfire, and you got to fix him, allegedly. So uh, one hand on the wheel... This is probably a, a manual car, foot on clutch and gas at the same time, trying to hit with this. this hey man, this is tough. No, I'm a little. Well, the case was a machine gun. On the crime scene, there was bullet casing to the right and bullet casing to the left at okay. that time. So there's, there was also bullet casings further down further down the road. There was bullet casing everywhere, you know? And they're saying there's no way this man wasn't intending to kill somebody. But our defense is our defense, you know? And yeah, they came back with a not guilty verdict. But okay, not guilty. Firearm, because the route to verdict was if you feel he knew the gun was in the car, you know, it's a two-seater R8, Audi R8. So you're sitting in close, pro close proximity of each other, you know? If they're two people in the car sitting next to each other, you know, they ask him, how does he not know that this person is carrying a gun? I know you've seen in movies, people do carry guns on their waistbands. Do you know what I mean? So I don't necessarily have to see a gun. Yeah, it's very possible that he didn't know that it was in there. Especially if he got picked up as a passenger. I'm already in the car, in the driver's seat. I got it wherever I got it. You you never know. And then... It's possible. When the girl virtue was... Well, well, tell me about the day that you were sentenced. And what was that? I was sentenced on the same day. I asked to be sentenced on the same day. Because I had everyone waiting to put their two pence in. And I didn't want that. Probation, the gang's unit, everyone to have their two pence to say whatever they want to say. Even though, even though some people smiled on my face. So I didn't want to go through that. I just said, I, I want my sentence today. No pre-sentence report. And the judge accepted. And I was sentenced to 11 years. Damn. When you heard 11 years, what did you think? I have a challenge for all of you. Go to every computer in your house, your mom's, your dad's, your sister. You know what they thought. Ah! He was hurt. Um... Well, before I was given 11 years, I had to put my mitigating factors forward. And my barrister obviously told the judge that I, 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 was, I was a young man trying to, that I had aspiration to be a musician and 
to give me a chance to come out to do music. And uh, what do you think about 11 years? You think that was too harsh, lenient? For the firearm, I understood. I understood. That's how long it's always double figures when it's a machine gun. So yeah. it wasn't a surprise. That's what the sentence I got was. You say it was justified? It was justified because of the case. It was, if you look at the guidelines, because of the case and what it was, the gun was fired. It was in the streets of London. It was in broad daylight. There's witnesses to say that there was people being, being drove after, you know? So, Cola, tell me what prison was like for you. Oh, prison was, prison was up and down, man. Prison was up and down. At the beginning, obviously, I, I didn't really get to settle in prison. That's one thing. I didn't really get to settle in prison for around three years of my time. You mean settle? Because I don't think a lot of people have to rely. What do you mean, settle in prison? Well, settle because I, I, was, I was being further arrested for other, other, other crimes. Yeah. You know, and it's, it was always firearms related. So, you know, I'm having to move prisons again, you know, so I had to go on other trials. While you were in prison? While I was in prison, yeah. They come and arrest you in prison. Um, and what was you charged for while you was in prison? Uh, attempted Fire. murder. Attempted murder. And those are two attempted murders? No, four. Four more attempted murders? Yeah, yeah. But... Later on down the line, you have to do your legal arguments and stuff like that. So, because there was other people present, there was... Man, when he got convicted of this, they was trying to give him all the charges. Any cold case they had around the area was going to him. Oh yeah, no, nah, it's him. Get him. I think there was, there was six people present, but four was in close, close proximity of the guy who had been shot. So that's why oh, um, okay, okay, I get they it, came I get with it. the full time to murder. But then you argue that, you know, legal arguments and then they drop it. They drop it, they drop it. But then they add other, other indictments into the thing just so that everyone agrees. And then you look at the evidence and then take it to trial. You're saying it, you're saying it took you three years to settle. So I'm assuming they all concluded after three years. Yeah. And what Everything. was the end results to all of those cases? And John? It was not guilty, not guilty, not guilty. You know, some of them NFA'd in the police station. There was loads of there was loads of cases, but some of them I can't really really get into. But yeah, do you think your childhood had, had, had any impact on, I guess, these choices, uh, and I guess doing end up so much prison time? Do you reckon you were being in a referral unit when you were a child? Do you reckon did these I guess shaped your upbringing and your your adulthood? Well, I wouldn't say shape, shape my adulthood, but you know, it, it, it kind of like, it kind of brings you around certain people. It brings you around certain people and it makes you, it makes you a certain way as well sometimes, you know? Because I often say you're a product of your own environment. Sort of, you know, sort of, sort of, you know? Growing up, you know, people having to be, you know, tough, having to be tough and you don't have to be tough, but growing up, if you're not tough, round tough guys, it's, you're gonna be literally Eating bait. Yeah. <laughs> you're gonna be food. Do you know what I'm saying? So after you settled, after three years in prison, what was, what was prison like from that point on, three years onwards? I was just trying to do better. I was trying to do better. You know, but it was just, I didn't really have a, I didn't really have focus that time. I didn't really have focus, but I was trying to find my, Still trying to find my purpose, you know, that's, that's the main thing. You gotta have your purpose in life. And that's what I always tell everyone. You have to have a purpose in what you're doing because if you don't, it's like, it's, if you don't have a purpose, you know, you're always gonna just do anything really. And I always give the example of, if I invited you on a journey and I said to you, we're going for a drive. If, we're, if we keep driving, eventually you're gonna ask me, where are we going? Where are we going? And if I just said to you, just hang tight, we're gonna be there soon. There will still be that question in your mind as to where are we going? And that's with life in general. If you don't have a direction and an end goal, you can find yourself being swayed by other things. And I have to admit, 
through my life. Some, sometimes, you know, I was, I was swayed facts. in some aspects of my life and I was involved in certain things, you know. But eventually, you know, life's, life's about making mistakes, you know. Rome wasn't built in a day as well. Nothing is perfect. So slowly but surely, you know, found myself and just moved forward. And what was the worst experience that you had in prison? Hey, Miami. Nothing is perfect. Isn't a circle perfect? Isn't a triangle perfect too? I don't know. Worst experience that you had in prison? I don't know. I had loads of experience, but I'll say one, one experience that I had that I did kind of, I did kind of like, Think like, what the fuck? It's when a group of guys, like, not even a group of guys, two guys came in my cell and tried to stab me. I wouldn't say, I don't say tried to stab me, did stab me. <laughs> did stab me with an ice pick. Yeah, maybe that story. I stabbed me with an ice pick. But it was like, there was a guy who, he's always asking me for things like, maybe he wants a box of eggs. <laughs> he wants, for, I don't know, tuna, but I felt like it was very manipulative, this specific guy, and I remember him coming to me to say, oh, I heard so-and-so is saying something, something, but he didn't say that, like, he just burst into my door, and I had a thing in prison, in prison don't just come into my, into my soul, I don't really have people come to me, I go to people, right. so... I've warned him about it before. He's a quite a big guy, but it's, in prison, for me, it didn't matter what size you was. It's just, I'm just a confident guy. Don't come to my cell like that, you know what I mean? And on this specific day, he came, barged in, yo, cola. And I was like, what? It's like, oh. I said, no, nah, actually, I didn't say, well, I said, bro, what did I tell you? Because whatever you want to say to me, I want to address my issue first. Why did you barge into my door when I've already told you not to do that? And, um, yeah, that's how prison go. Little things turn into big things. It's all about respect. I asked you not to barge in this month. You know, we in prison. I'm already on edge, and you tweaking by barging in my door. It's gonna send me off the deep end. So what's what's up? I asked you once, so now it's an issue. I feel you. He looked at me and he said, "Forget that," <laughs> and he walked away. But that's how I knew that like, this guy's heart wasn't so pure, because if you if you knew something was going on and you wanted to inform me as to what was going on, you would still tell me regardless of what my attitude was at that time because you sincerely care. The only reason why you move the way you move is because you only wanted to benefit from giving me that information for later on for yourself. Right. So he left about five minutes later. I remember I was there and doing what I was doing. Crashed in. And I remember just seeing the hand like that. Like, like literally trying to, you feel me? But I went up. I done, I just had a, a brief, I used to have a quick reflex. I still do. I went like that. Sorry, that's funny. Got out of the cell, you feel me? And I went into my next doors and then I just remember looking at my chest and it was literally blood like that. And I thought, fuck, that was the time I thought, fuck, I've been stabbed in my heart because that's where your heart is. I thought, shit, I've been stabbed in my heart, you know? And, um... You would have been dead, buddy. Yeah, I took off my top. And I remember the, the guy next door, he's, he's a good guy. And he's, 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 he said to me, I'm going to chill out, chill out. Let me see, let me see. And he just looked over me, like check, checked my body and then found where the source of the bleeding was. And he, he said, oh, don't worry, man. It's not that bad, it's not that bad. But the main thing I got stabbed in my, in my bicep as well. Do you know what I'm saying? So the stab in my bicep and the one under my chest was the one that turned my top red. So mm. I quickly took off took off my t-shirt and tore and, and tied it round the one on my arm because a bit a bit more fleshy. And I remember the, I don't know, one of the guys was trying to take something from my cell at that time, you know? And this incident was based on somebody else. Freshly stabbed, they trying to rob you. Because I, I, I saw them, they had, we had a mit, like an altercation with each other and I, I saw him in the gym, saw the guy in the gym and Obviously, the guy thought he was tasty at that time. Who? But when I came to actually be in front of his face with no one there, it wasn't, that wasn't the situation. So he came, off, he came off worse than I did, even though he instigated it. And um, I went back, went back. 
and the word got around. And it's always the, always the lifers in prison, you know. A lot of people say, oh, don't, don't talk to the lifers. Don't, you know, that's the thing in prison. The lifers probably don't know this, but people that are not doing life sentence always say, no, listen, don't associate yourself with the lifers. Their mindset is different. You know what I'm saying? It's true. the lifers. <laughs> but the, I just, yeah. But I always show love to everyone. And I always show love to this guy because of his, his co-defendants and stuff like that. But moving forward, you know, that incident happened and yeah, it just made me more of a, yeah, you know, but I ended up dealing with it. You know, I dealt with the situation <laughs> one by one. Carla, can you tell me the worst memory that you had while you was in prison? Uh, one of the worst memory was, um, just had no money, having no money back in. I think it was too- uh, You had nobody out on uh, outside giving you, putting money on your books or nothing? 2012, I literally had run out of money, man, because things weren't going too well. And you know, there's people outside you think, oh yeah, everyone's got you. But realistically, the only people that really have you is your family. Right. But more time, you don't really call your family, you call your friends, you know? But most of my friends were in jail, you feel me? And um, there was one girl I used to talk to. She was my good friend. You know, I used to look after her, help her out when I was outside. And I remember calling her. It was, you used to get 50p a week, you know? I used to put 50p on the phone. You get two pound 50, but they take 50p for the phone. Then you have to maybe want to use one pound for something. Back then it was crazy. And you only used to have the phone outside, this blue box to use. So I remember going on the phone, I had 50p and I had to make one phone call. And I called her quick and I said, yo, Send me money, because I said, try to send me 25 to 50 pounds, you know, because I really need it, I've got no money, literally. And because of somebody I've really been around and looked out for, yeah. why wouldn't they look after me at this time in need? So I was thinking, yeah, the, the, the postal order, because I back then. <laughs> yeah, right. That ain't how that work. Ain't no loyalty. What can you do for her at this time? You can't do nothing for her. You're gone. You are replaced. You could send postals into prison. I was thinking, raw, this postal order is going to come through any minute now. Thursday came because the credit goes on every Thursday. So I used to put this 50p on to make this call. And um, I went on the prison phone to, to make this phone call. So I didn't get the money. And I remember the girl saying, oh, you know what? Yeah, I can't. I couldn't send you that money because I had to do something. I had to use it for something else. And I thought, what could be more important? than me needing that money, 25 quid at least, do you know what I mean? And I just, I felt so hurt, man. I felt so hurt because I, I, I just- She probably got her nails done, which is the crazy part. When, I'm, when, I, when I look after people, when I check for people, is with sincerity, you know? There's no hidden agendas, but I do that, not because I want something back, but when you are in need, you never know when that time is gonna be. You feel like the people that you looked out for, should look after you, you know what I mean? I mean, everyone has their own option. They have a choice in life to do whatever they want to do, but it's, it's only normal. If someone's looked after me, I'm a very appreciative person. I'll always have your back, you know? So at that time, I just, it was a- That's how I am too, you know what I'm saying? So when, when people, I, I get exactly what he's saying. Like when people do some stuff to you, it hurt more when you know you would never do it to them. I would never do you like that. That's why I'm so hurt about it, because you did it to me. Like, I get that. It's a very dark moment. And I remember calling, you know, getting one of my... Well, she actually wrote to me, one of my friends, you know. She wrote to me, checking if I'm okay and stuff like that. And I told her, I, I wrote to her and I said, she goes, do you need anything? I said, yeah, send me a postal. Do you, do you, she asked, I said, do you want me to send me a postal? I said, yeah, she sent me a number, I registered a number. And I remember she, this girl was pregnant at the time. She was actually pregnant with her, with her first child. And yeah, she went, she sent me 50 pounds. You know, Solid. Never, to this day, I never forget that. She's still my friend to this day. Solid. And I to myself, Rah. And I met this specific girl through that other girl. But she's still my friend to this day, than the other one. Very sincere, you know what I mean? And I just, I just felt. It'd be crazy. It'd be like that, man. People who you least expect, like they'd be doing stuff for you more than, more than people that you've known a whole lifetime. You know, not everyone you started the journey with, you're always going to end the journey with. Facts. You know? And sometimes 
people are put into your life for you to meet other people. So don't always think like, all the people you're with today is the people you're gonna be with forever. You know, sometimes those people are just coming for a specific part of your yep. life to teach you a lesson. And other people are blessed, you know, you're blessed with other people that's gonna help you, you know, enjoy your life and get to the places you wanna to get to. Strangers, in fact, be your biggest supporters. I learned, you know how I learned that, obviously. Social media taught me that. I can ask some of my friends, and I don't blame them. It's not for them. My content not for them. But I can ask them, what was the last video I put out? I would have no clue. Some people didn't even know I did YouTube. It's crazy. Well, you know, it's not crazy, but it's just like, damn. All right. But you got to keep in mind, like, people be on the, in their own worlds. They don't even be paying attention to the outside stuff. They got their own stuff going on. It's like, cool, man. I make this stuff for the homies. <laughs> y'all the homies. We make it for y'all. I mean, but yeah, that was one of my darkest moments in, in prison, man. You know, just having nothing and needs, actually needing something and being let down by the people that you thought, I sincerely thought was going to be there for me. So tell me about the day, Cola. Um, Ashley, how long have you been home now? Three weeks. I've been home only for three weeks now. That's what you said. Three weeks. Three weeks, yeah. Three weeks now, yeah. What was that feeling like three weeks ago when you got released? I just felt Relieved. very, very liberated because this is the fi final years. This is like, I'm literally a free man. How old are you? I'm 32 now. So your 20s are... My, I, yeah, I wasted all my 20s in jail, man. What advice would you give to Swangola? I guess, because the, the, the next generation, I think everyone always says the next generation is bad, the next generation is bad, but this generation does seem very, very bad and doesn't really, I guess it's almost like prisons glamorized. It's almost cool. Because yeah, it, but no one ever tells you that, you know, in the long run, you're going to suffer. You're literally going to suffer. You're going to spend all your life in jail because you want to impress people that actually don't care about you. Like most people around, yes, you can be in a gang, you can, you can roll with whoever you want to roll with, but when real life really hits, not these gonna people be there. are going to be there. If you have your own home, for example, and you went to prison, you have to ask yourself, how many of the people around you can you leave your home with to be responsible to those bills, those direct debits? Can you actually say, you know what? Help me look after this. You might have got your car on finance. How many of your friends, when you look around, can you say, this person will look after my belongings like it's their own? That's deep as hell. No one. <laughs> then no one's going to pick up your bills unless you got money in the bank and they might take the money. You know, most people around you, they're just, they're just in it for what they can get. And that's what the streets don't Facts. understand. You know, when, you're, when you're in the streets, you just think everyone is, yeah, my, 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 my bro, yeah, my guy, my guy. And you think, oh, they might send you a few money here and there. That makes them your friend. But realistically, when, you, when you're really deeper, your real friends, they don't want you to do bad things. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? They're always trying to channel you for greatness. They want you to be the best. Like none of my close friends ever tell me to go and do certain things. They want me to do well and they always tell me, chill out, you know? And Cola, what was the biggest change that you noticed? I love shopping the real real. It's Gucci. Right. It's just everyone's society of the world when you come out. And Cola, what was the biggest <coughs> change that you noticed in society of the world when you come out? It's just everyone's. Mm, He's been locked up since 2012, so he. You missed a lot, buddy. Very, very self-centered. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's why I believe a lot of people are just self-centered and it's like... I feel like he got locked up right before social media. So social media will make you very self-centered, man. If you're not benefiting people, you know, they don't really want to know. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But that's how the game, it's always been like that. You know, I've been told, told that, you know, when I was young. But seeing as an adult, because life really gets serious, you know, you've got responsibilities now. So you start realizing how people behave and people move. Everyone could be with you today, smiling, smiling. As soon as things are not going well, you're being left. Carla, what's different? Why will you never go back to prison again? 
because I have more focus in life, you know, and I'm in control of me. You know what I'm saying? I have a choice and I've spent my time reflecting on myself. I don't, I don't point fingers. I don't blame the world. I don't. Hey, low key. Remember he said the probation, the probation officer said that he needed a long sentence so he could reflect. Was she wrong? (laughs) People's fault. The things I went through, I don't say it's anyone's fault. It's it's my fault because I have I have a choice to make. You know what I'm saying? And I always even even in little bad situations that I find myself in, I always ask myself, first of all, what do I take responsibility for? And I always try and find the positives in the negative. And sometimes when I feel, I wouldn't say the old me and the bad sides coming out, I always take a step back and always remind myself all those bad times I've been through. Cause I've, I'm blessed. I always say I'm blessed. No. You say bad times. Tell me about the worst memory of your life. Of my life. There's, there's many. There's many, many, many. Single many. it out. To pick one. It just, I wouldn't, I wouldn't really get into it, man. You know, but there's, there, there is many that, I can't really go into, man. <laughs> Tell me one that you can't go into. The worst memory of my life. That's something you'll never forget. I'll say one, you know, one situation when um, I was nearly shot. I was nearly shot. Tell Ooh. me what happened. I was just standing there. Can you? Came to check a few guys, you know, and um, well, everyone was standing there. And I remember the guys I was with was like, yo, that car over there is moving suspicious. I've always been a confident guy. I'm not really watching nothing. And um, we're standing there and I remember the car just coming round, coming round and pulls up right in front of me. The car pulls up in front of me and um, everyone ran. But I, I stayed there. So I remember the window going down and there was a few firearms like just pointing at me, just clicking, click, click, click. Oh, jamming. And I just remember. Rusty whoever, things. <laughs> the, 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 the person that was sitting further, further away from the car. So let's say the car is facing like that. The driver's there. The shooters is in the back of the car. And I'm standing right here. So the person sitting here, while this person's trying to shoot me, the person over here is leant over and tried to shoot his gun as well, but the gun just wasn't working. I'm saying all the guns in the car wasn't working. That's crazy. Think about how rare that is. Like all the guns wasn't working. That's crazy. Damn. All them joints was rusty, not matching. The car sped off. <laughs> so that's that's one a moment. Fail. And then everyone ran back and said, "Call up, fucking hell." You know what I'm saying? So. So I guess that life that you was a part of, what advice would you give to people who are, I guess, in that now, 19, 20? Uh, and why will you never go back there? No, it's not, it's not like, I don't like to say I was part of it, but, you know, we grew, where I grew up is, you know, things happen, things. My advice <laughs> is that it is what it is when you in it. But just keep a n- mental note of what's going on around you. Because a lot of these people is not going to be there for you, really. Because they also in the same boat as you. So when you get in trouble or have to go away, they still got to handle real life situations on the street. So just be aware that there is another option. There's other ways. There's other options, man. Happen, but I just say to people, you just be, be in control of you. You don't have to address every issue. Facts. You know what I'm saying you don't have to address every single situation that people try and get you involved in. You have to be confident in yourself what you would do. Because like my mum always says to me when I was when I was younger, she always goes, "Don't give the police 
don't be the job for the police to do. And I didn't quite understand what she, she meant at that time, like, don't give police work to do, don't be their job. But it's only as I got older, I realised, you know what? When I'm finding myself in this situation, that's the job for the police to do. And their business is getting convictions. I'm the one in the court. When, whenever I've been in court, I'm the reason why everyone is in court. Yeah. And I'm the one that faces the most consequences in court. But guess where everyone else who triggered all of this, guess where they are? They're nowhere. Mm -hmm. they're, probably, they're probably standing as a victim. They're standing as witnesses. They're standing as informants. Do you understand what I'm saying? And I'm, I'm there. And like regardless of how many friends, how many people got you, you're there by yourself. You are the one that's going to face the consequences. So you go always remind, remind yourself that you have a choice not to be the job for the police. And I always remind myself that all the time. It's good advice from your mm -hmm. mom, W Hold mom. On, back of that. Tell me the best memory of your life. I say the best memory of my life is when I made my first sale of Barnes Gorelli, my clothing brand. Do you know what I'm saying? Oh, okay. That's, that's one of the best memory because I always, I always, I never fought to my I was wondering what this hoodie was. It kind of low-key looked designer. I was like, that's just a tough hoodie. So if I would make something that would actually sell legally, do you know what I'm saying? So when I sold my w first promo too. t t-shirt, funny enough, when I was in prison, it gave me a boost and the way everyone received it. You know, more people wanted this clothing brand and, you know, till this day, when I was in prison all those years, when I got recalled, you know, people always ask me, what do you miss about outside? You know, most people think, oh, I was missing going out with girls or partying or, you know, eating food. It was I didn't miss nothing like that. What I'd missed was just waking up to my clothes in my bed, all the clothes I sold, and waking up to my embroidery machine. <laughs> Carla, I want to say thank you for sharing your story. Um, and before we finish, is there anything that you'd like to say? I'd just like to say um, thanks for having me, first of all. And um, everyone watching, go follow Barnes Gorelli on Instagram, on Snapchat. And don't just be lit, be Barnes Gorelli lit. <laughs> don't just be lit, be the lit one. TLO, leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notifications. I'm gone.